Hey guys, it's Adrian from VHA here bringing you a new video. So the great folks over at VZoom sent me over a couple of products to show you guys. Uh, the first thing we're going to take a look at is their 8-channel MDR, which is kind of on the Uniview platform, uh, utilizing that guard station client. But we're going to dive into it and see what we can do with it. And to go along with that MDR, they sent me over a 5-megapixel bullet cam. This is your standard PoE on BIF uh, bullet cam, so it should work well with this MVR, and it will probably work with most MVRs that support on BIF uh, and RTSP. Here we go. All right, so uh, you can pick up this NVR along with uh, four bullet cams for about 400 bucks, uh, which is not a bad deal. It's pretty standard price uh, for most of those NVR packages that you see on Amazon. If you want to get the camera by itself, you can get it for about 45 bucks. Again, about standard price uh, for these types of cameras and NVRs. Nonetheless, we're going to dive right in and see what all we can do with it. All right, so they sent everything as basically two separate products. They have the camera by itself and the MVR by itself. Uh, so let's start by opening the camera up here. As you can see, their marketing kind of put everything on the outside of the box, just like a lot of companies are doing now. Um, but if we get this thing opened up here, right there on the top, we got the instructions uh, for installing the camera, as well as the mounting template uh, to help us drill the holes if we needed to. Let's see, we got the uh, waterproof boot for the uh, network connection and the screws needed to mount the camera. We also get a, a network cable, which is kind of surprising. You don't normally see that with these cameras uh, just because you're going to usually need a pretty long network cable uh, for a full installation. And last but not least, in this box, we got the uh, camera itself. Now, this is a pretty small form factor bullet camera. One thing I did notice is on the front of this camera, it's got that glossy finish, which I see a lot on a lot of the newer cameras now. It seems to kind of be the norm uh, for these cameras now is to have that glossy front. Uh, right there on the back is where you can add that SD card if you want a local storage and you're not using an MVR. But that's everything in the camera box. Let's move over to the MVR box here. Now it does list some of its main features on the outside of the box as well. Let's get this thing opened up here. Okay, so here on the back, you got the eight PoE ports for the camera and then the management network port. And that's kind of how you'll access it as well as you got audio, VGA, HDMI and USB for the keyboard and mouse. Now, other than that, you got the instructions in the box here. We got the power cord for the MBR itself. We got a mouse to control it locally. And it even comes with its own network cable as well. That about covers everything that VZoom sent me. Uh, let's just go over some of the main specs here. Uh, so this sheet goes into pretty good detail, probably more than we need. Uh, but this is a five megapixel camera. It does not support two way audio. So it has a microphone to allow you to hear sound, but you have no way to talk back. It has motion detection as well as RTSP and OMVIF interoperability. Lastly, this is a PoE camera, so it will support power over Ethernet. Now on to the MVR specs. Now this is an eight channel MVR and it does support up to eight megapixel cameras. So that's pretty nice. Uh, let's see, we got the HDMI port. You'll be able to get the 4K uh, output on the TV. Looks like uh, the hard drive port comes with a two terabyte hard drive, but it will handle up to 12 terabytes of storage. 
Let's see, there is one USB port on the back, but there are two USB ports on the front as well, which should allow you to hook up both a keyboard and a mouse for local control. Now those are the most important specs, at least to me, for this unit as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step and get the camera and MVR installed. Okay, so first things first, we're just going to install the camera. This should be pretty easy to do. As you can see here, I'm going to be installing it on the side of my house right here. It will kind of cover the area here along the side of my house and should do a pretty good job. So here it is, we've got it installed and it was pretty easy to do. I actually ended up replacing another camera that was here so it made it very easy since I was able to use an existing network cable that was already there. I basically just pulled the old camera down and put the new one in its place. But that's really all you need to do as far as physically installing the camera. Now we can move on to the next step and we will kind of get the MVR set up uh, so we can get the camera added to it. All right, so one of the first things you're probably going to want to do once you have the NVR online is you want to make sure that it has a static IP address. It just makes it easier when you're um, accessing it if it always has the same IP address and you don't want that to change. Um, there are different ways to do that depending on what kind of router firewall you have, so I'm not going to go into details on that here. Uh, but once you have given it a static IP, you can just uh, access it by going to http colon slash slash whatever the IP address is. And when you first go to it, it's gonna prompt you to change your admin password. Once you kind of go through their initial setup and changing of the password, um, it lets you in. And man, this thing looks really nice. I like the dark design. I'm a sucker for a good dark theme and I think this really has a nice setup, a nice look to it. Basically, once we get that camera added into this MVR, we'll be able to view it here. Uh, but let's go over to settings here. Uh, it starts us down here in the system settings. So we can change the output resolution, make it 4K. This will require a reboot though. Let's see, uh, we got the time zone. I can set the correct time zone for my area here. If you needed to create user accounts, this is where you would do that. And then here is the spot for changing your admin password, kind of that main default admin account. Uh, under maintenance, you have the ability to update the firmware, reboot the MVR. Um, moving on here, under the network section, this is where you can change the IP address if you wanted to statically assign it versus DHCP. Uh, there's also the section for dynamic DNS. And uh, if you want to start receiving email alerts, you can set up uh, an SMTP server for email alerts here as well. We actually have the ability uh, to make changes to the PoE status on a port if we want to as well. So if you have a camera that is using maybe a power brick and not going to be powered by PoE, then you can actually disable PoE on that port um, and you will still be able to use that port for the camera. Let's see, under record, this is where you kind of set your record schedule. Uh, you'll also be able to format your hard drive here. and. At, if you didn't notice, this does have the two terabyte hard drive. So like we talked about, this uh, MBR does come with a two terabyte hard drive. And then lastly, this is where you're going to add your cameras. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step and I'll show you how that's done. All right, so adding a camera is pretty easy. Basically, as soon as you plug in the PoE camera into the PoE port, it will start to recognize it just like it's done here. Now, you just need to make sure that you're using the right username and password for the camera itself. Now, most of this time, this will be a default admin admin or something like that. 
Um, if you changed it on the camera for any reason, then you can go ahead and set that here. Uh, once the NVR can get connected to the camera, you will see the green light here indicating that it's connected. And now you can go through, make any changes you want to the encoding uh, or the image settings if you want. You have the ability to change the name of the camera uh, that will also be displayed on the screen. If you go back to that main screen out of the settings, uh, we can see what that camera is going to look like. Now, of course, this is nighttime, but it looks pretty good. Not too bad of a view here. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, and we'll take a look at the camera in the VZoom app. All right, so here we are in the VZoom app. Uh, now the app picked up the MVR almost immediately uh, once they were both on the same network. Uh, so now you got your ability to manually record, um, enable and disable night mode, and it even shows your motion detection right here as well. Now this is what it looks like at night on the app. It's a pretty good picture quality. I was pretty happy with it. You know, we looked at it previously on the MVR, but this is on the app. And again, the quality looks pretty well for, for a five megapixel camera. I also have it here in daytime as well. And again, five megapixel quality, not too bad. Um, it looks really good, very clear image. I need to really change the angle of the camera so I can get a better view, but you at least get the idea of what it's uh, what it looks like. Let's move on to the last step and I will give you my final thoughts. Okay, so VZoom. Not a big name brand that most people have heard of. Before they reached out to me, I'm not even sure that I have ever heard of them. But $400 for a 8-channel um, 4K NVR that comes with four bullet cameras and has two terabytes of hard drive space is a pretty decent deal. Uh, you'll find a lot of these uh, for sale on Amazon, so you know it's, it's hard to say which one's probably the best. I'm not going to lie, I really like the dark theme that this uh, has built into it, and the layout seemed really nice. I mean, it's probably one of the best theme layouts I've seen. Uh, the individual camera itself for 45 bucks is probably a little higher than I have seen on some other cameras, but not too far off. I think if I was going to buy cameras individually to add to uh, the MVR, I would probably look at getting 4K capable cameras, you know, 8 megapixels just because the MVR itself already supports them. And I, I hate to just keep adding five megapixel cameras. I mean, overall, I, I was very pleased with the VZoom NVR and five megapixel bullet cam. Normally at this time of the video is where I would mention VZoom's website and tell you to head over there and see what other products um, they currently offer. But unfortunately, they only have these two products listed on their website. I'll still have the link in the description below, so feel free to check it out. They do have all the specs and everything uh, regarding both devices. So, I mean, you can get all the information that you possibly need and any questions you might have, they should be answered there on those spec sheets. Hopefully, they'll be getting some new products added onto their website very soon. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my spring merchandise page and check out all of the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're looking for the latest smart home gear, check out Smonet. I'll have a link in the description below. Head over to their website and see what deals they currently have running. And if you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description for that as well. And if you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, 
hit me up in the comments below as always if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that i don't already have out there let me know in the comments as well and i'll see if i can't get something put together for you guys otherwise i'll see you guys around